We are. What is that? Oh. What did you say? Oh, we discussed that. Yeah. Oh, we discussed it actually. Feedback. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you remember about p value? Um, a smaller p value means that we can reject the no, the no hypothesis. The small p value means. Um, we can reject the no. We can, or we cannot. Uh, we can reject the no. Okay, good. We reject the no, no what? Do you remember? Hypothesis. Hypothesis. Yeah. How do I show the no hypothesis? H uh, zero. H zero. Good. So. What is hypothesis? I mean, what do you remember from, you know, we say hypothesis and explain it? Uh, it's a representation of claims. It's a claim, good, very good. Hypothesis is a claim. And, uh, and we are trying to see if the claim that population scientists uh, are making is correct or not, right? It's not, I, we cannot say correct, because we never have, you know, a full confidence about that, but we always can say we have enough evidence to support their claim, or we don't have enough evidence to support their claim. Okay, so when the p-value is small, we reject the null hypothesis, and if we reject the null hypothesis, means we cannot reject the alternative hypothesis. Very good, we cannot reject How do I show, show the H1? Oh, H1. Yeah. H1 or? HA. HA. Okay, when I say p value is small, what do I mean with a small? When the p value is less than or equal to alpha? less than or equal alpha. Alpha is like a cutoff value, right? Okay, so alpha could be 0 0.01, which is equal to one person. Alpha could be 0 0.05, which is equal to five person, or uh, other alphas. So here, you can compare this with 99% confidence interval, and then compare this with 95% confidence interval. Because the alpha is always the value on each side. This is a small area on each side. And then the mid part will be the confidence interval. Uh, okay, so very good. We have this one, and then what else? Uh, large P. Large P value. So, what do we mean by large P value? We cannot reject the null hypothesis. Oh, we cannot reject the no hypothesis, call that H1 or HA, right? And then when you cannot reject the null hypothesis means? The, the null hypothesis H0. Oh, good, very good, thank you. Very good. And then what happens if you cannot reject the null? So, what do you mean by large p value? What should I write down? Uh, p value is 
Um, greater or equal to the alpha? Greater than, oh, greater than alpha. Because here I had less than equal, right? So if alpha is equal to p value, we consider that as small, okay? So now, uh, what usually no hypothesis in mathematical notation, what usually it looks like? It has no change or no, it's basically the same as, uh, no difference, no change is equal. Equal to? Uh, the, the claim. So hypothesis, hypothesis itself is a claim, right? And then what you, what, when you say claim, you mean that no value that is set up for the claim. Correct, very good. So we write down our no hypothesis in this way. So we know that we always show that with H naught, and then we are talking about what? There is a parameter that we use here, right? What parameter we are talking about in this chapter? Population mu? Good. Mu, which is population mu. Very good. So when she said no difference, no change means our no hypothesis is always equality sign. Right? And then on the other side, we have mu naught that we call that the null value or the claim that population uh, make. And then HA can have, so what kind of alternatives uh, can we have? Uh, mu. One side of it states that it's either larger or smaller than the mu. Uh -huh. And she said it's, it's different from not equal very good correct do you remember so we could have three different alternative and based on this study we choose which alternative you are going for so now today we are going to look at more example we are going to look at example because we are going to solve some example today Okay, so let's see. Do you remember uh, the swiftness in cola we were talking about last time? The manufacturer thinks that uh, soda will, um, soda loses its uh, sweetness during time, right? And the loss of sweetness was a positive value. I Means if higher, we have a higher scale, like this value, if you have a positive and higher scale, means soda losses so much sweetness, right? And if it is negative value, means it gained sweetness. Do you remember? So the claim here was that the soda will lose its sweetness and the value means it's the, the value that they measure is a positive and a large value, right? So we could set up a hypothesis in this way. So the null hypothesis, soda, soda does not lose or gain sweetness, right? And then alternative, because they are saying it loses the sweetness and we know the positive value means lose of sweetness, the alternative can be mu greater than zero. Means any number greater than zero, zero means there's a loss of sweetness. Do you get that? Is that clear this part? Okay, very good. So we have some information in this question. In this question, they have a sample size of 10, 10 of these scales. So they have 10 taster, right? And each of them gave a value to a soda that they were trying. And then they said if the population of standard deviation is one and the sample of 10 uh, scale 
if that gives us an average of 0 0.3 now how you can um, how you can prove or disprove the claim so we have some information we set up our claim and now we are trying to use some knowledge to see if we have enough evidence to support uh, the loss of sweetness okay okay so now i'm going to go to this slide and this slide gives us a formula for the test statistic that we must use in order to test our uh, hypothesis so the test statistic you see here is very familiar to you right we we use this many times and now based on the null hypothesis based on the null hypothesis of equality we know this is the null value that population claims sometimes it's zero sometimes like that question we had last time about iq of people is 100 for example so it can be different value negative positive zero based on the question right so if we currently set up our null hypothesis we definitely know what is mu naught right so like in a sweetness example mu naught is zero right and then x bar x bar is the average of 10 sweetness uh, 10 scale what was that 0.3 good and then we have sample size right we have sigma also right so based on the question and information they give us we easily can find the test statistic and in this chapter the test statistic that we are trying and we use is called z test statistic okay so a step by step when we have a question we set up our null and our alter alternative hypothesis right then we find the test statistic then based on test statistic based on our alternative we calculate the p-value and then we will compare our p-value with alpha so now we are going to go through example so oh, first of all these are the way when i say based on alternative these are the way we set up our p-value so what you see here is the sign of This is the sign of alternative. Either greater than or less than or not equal to. So you see for each of these alternative, I have different p-value. So the whole thing you see here is how to calculate p-value. And then what is this a small z? Z test statistic or okay here we call that z test statistic. This is what we see we saw in previous slide. I will just explain. So this is the test statistic that we calculate. So that's the reason I say your p value is based on the test statistic and sign of alternative. So, in the example of soda, you saw the alternative that I created is greater than, right? So, in this case, I will go with the p-value that is shown here. Okay, and then before being able to calculate in the p-value, I had to um, calculate the test statistic. And the area that the p-value is, is this a small area. This is the p 
feedback for us. And then in the case of alternative being less than, p value is here. And then in the case of two sided test, our p value is this one plus this one. That's why we have two times of p value. Means we calculate a p value for one side and then we multiply it to two, two to get both shaded area. And if you remember from confidence interval, this was z star, this was negative z star, right? To just calculate one of them, we are trying to use absolute value to get rid of negative and say, okay, we just calculate for positive z star and then we just multiply it by two because we know this side and this side are exact same, right? In an example uh, for soda, we are going to choose this one, right? Because our alternative is greater than. And now what I need to find here? What do I need to find? Very good. And the formula for that was x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma over square root of n, right? And then we have 0 0.3 minus zero, zero divided by one over square root of n. Very good. So we have 0 0.3 divided by something here. more one more after six so we have more accurate and then divide this have any questions so far? I just found the z-test statistic, right? <coughs> what should I find now? The, the, the p-value. <laughs> so all the aim of finding z is to put in this equation here, in here, and find the p-value, right? So now p value is equal to the probability probability of greater than right greater than equal to and now I put 0 0.95 here So how do we get this answer? Yes. Anyone else? 
the table gives you the area to the left side, right? The area to the left side means less than. Am I right? Okay. It says greater than. Is that the probability for oh, okay. 0 0.95? So this is the Z. Okay. This is this is the Z. Means you should look at the first column and the top part of the table, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then eight, eight, nine. Okay. Good. So now because. This one is greater than, and the table table gives us less than. I'm going to write down one minus probability of z less than equal 95, and this is less than comes from table. And what did you find? One minus zero point. Zero point seventeen point seventeen one one. This is your p value. So is that clear how we got the p-value now? So okay, so now I have to, I have to what? I have to compare p-value with alpha, right? So now, since I, in the question, I didn't have the alpha, I'm going to give you, well, Alpha could be either 0 0.01, 0 0.05. These are the most famous alpha, right? I'm going to compare this p-value with, with alpha equals 0 0.01 first. Just to show you what happens with either of these alphas. So maybe question gave me 0 0.01, right? But now since I don't have it, I'm just going to try the different alpha. So the p-value is 0 0.1711, right? Is that a large p-value or a small p-value? compared to alpha. Because 0 0.17 is definitely greater than 0 0.01, right? So in this case, we have a large p-value when alpha is 0 0.01, right? Now I'm going to try with another alpha. Compare p-value with alpha equals 0 0.05. So now what happens? Is that a still large p-value? It's small. Is that a small? So 0 .0, 0 0.17 is less than 0 0.05, you say? No. No, right? So still it's a large p-value, correct? It's still large 
p value. So in either case, p value is greater than alpha Correct. So, what should I write down as a interpretation? Uh, we, can, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Reject the alternative hypothesis. So, what does this mean in a, in our question in our study of sweetness? So, what was alternative in a sweetness study? What that means? Of what that alternative means? What this means? What did I say when I was setting this up? This was population or scientists, scientists or manufacturers claim, right? What their claim? What was uh, their there is claim? No loss of sweetness. No, no loss of sweetness, right? Let me write it down here. So this was saying no loss of sweetness. So now connect this one with this one. What should I say? If we are rejecting the alternative, means there is a gain or loss of sweetness. Gain. So we rejected, um, we rejected this claim. There's no. I thought we it says we cannot reject the null and what is the null? So we're basically saying that there is no loss of sweetness. Okay, so very good. So this was not correct. So no, switch the, it. The no loss is the the HO. Very good, very good. So you're paying paying attention. So this was no loss of sweetness right so what was alternative then um, there is a loss of sweetness there is a loss of sweetness very good so now you are explaining uh, this no and alternative very good so now tell me if their claim was that there is a loss of sweetness and we found that based on our p-value, we found that we reject the alternative, what we are going to say, combining this one and that one? There is a gain of sweetness, right? But we always say, we cannot say it that way and say, okay, we accept something or say, oh, there's a game. But we can say it in this way. That was uh, good. That was like an explanation to understand it. Very good. So the way I'm going to write it down is that we don't have enough evidence that the soda loss sweetness during time or after after some time in a storage right they were talking about they did store the soda Okay, look at this, think about this. 
and try to understand it, what is going on. Did I, uh, did I write it down in a correct way? Good. So what I did from the beginning, first of all, I set up the null and alternative. Then understand the alternative, right? So what exactly they mean by alternative. And then look at the sign of alternative Choose the p-value that you have to use. Because our alternative had a greater than sign, this is the p-value we choose, right? Then, we come here calculating the z-test statistic, right? Then put this in the equation that we have for p-value, right? And then, because this was a greater than area and the table gives us the less than area we have to subtract whatever we get from table from one right do you remember this we got the value 0 0.17 and this is our p-value then I have to compare the p-value with the cutoff value alpha I didn't have alpha from the question I just said, okay, what happens is if alpha is 0 0.01? And what happen, happens if alpha is a little bit bigger? In both cases, p-value was less, uh, was greater than alpha, right? Correct? And then I will go back to the uh, way we are explaining the p-value, large p-value, right? And then I wrote it down here. And then I have to connect this with the alternative that I have. Alternative tells us there's a loss of sweetness. But here, I see that we are rejecting the alternative. So we don't have enough evidence to say there is a loss of sweetness, right? We are rejecting their claim. We are rejecting manufacturer's claim. So we don't have any evident, enough evidence to support their claim. So there is no loss of sweetness, right? Is that correct? Is that clear? Sure? Do you have any question about this? Would that mean the result is not statistically significant? So when p-value is large, the result is not statistically significant. Good for reminding me that. So in this case, the result is not statistically significant. So the result is not statistically significant means we don't have enough evidence to support our result. Uh, their claim, kind of. Okay, so this was the soda example. And then they are showing that in a statistical applet. And they are showing the area for p-value. And then they are saying more than 17% of the time, an SRS of size 10 of trained testers would have a mean sweetness difference at least as great as, great as the observed. The observed is 0 0.3, is therefore not good evidence that the COLA experienced loss of sweetness. Okay, so if you remember last time we had another uh, question about the worker. Does the job satisfaction of assembly workers 
differ when their work is machine-based rather than self-based. So the difference between machine-based and self-based, okay, let me read more. It says assign workers either to an assembly line moving at a fixed pace or to a self-paced setting. All subjects work in both setting in random after two weeks. In each work setting, the workers take a test of job satisfaction. And then we have something like here, two-sided test, right? Because they didn't claim that their satisfaction is higher or less, right? They just said there is a difference between uh, uh, the satisfaction difference. So it says the author of the study wanted to know whether the two weeks condition have different levels of job satisfaction. They didn't specify the direction of the difference, if it is a bigger difference or smaller difference. They didn't mention that. So we are going to stick with a two-sided alternative, which is not equal to, right? And then I'm going to set up the node and alternative. So node is always equal to, well, here they didn't give us a node value. We just know there is difference, there is no difference. And we have to compare that with zero, right? So it's always equality sign. This one, not equal to. So I'm going to write down what they are saying. It says to know whether the two, two uh, work conditions have different level of satisfaction. They didn't specify the direction of difference. So they are saying there is a different levels of satisfaction. Versus this one which says there is no difference, different level of satisfaction. Look at it and see if this correct and makes sense. Everything fine? Do you understand the alternative and no hypothesis? Okay. So I'm going to go to the slide that the job satisfaction is. Okay. So now we have some information here. It says if sigma is 60, if n is 18, and they gave us average in level of satisfaction for 18 workers. So 18 becomes the sample size, right? And then this one is X bar, means mean of satisfaction in that, in those, the sample of six, uh, 18. And then they gave us the sigma to be 60, right? So we should find the z value, right? Z test the statistic. Do I have all the information here? Okay, should be fine. 
Should I write down? Very good. Now calculate this, the whole thing without you know rounding it up, so we have a more precise number. Correct, everyone? Yes. Okay. So, what is the next step? What should I do now? This one on the table? Or, okay, so you are correct. I'm just trying to figure out what kind of p value is it. Right? Yes. Two times probability of z greater than equal to absolute value of z. Do you remember what is absolute value? What does absolute value do? What does absolute value do? So we choose what's the positive? Yes, correct. So what's the capital Z supposed to be? Untouched. It's oh. the variable, so don't put anything in there. But a small Z is the one we just found. Okay. So after you find the number on the table, the weight, um, it gives you the left side. Very good. So are we still trying to find the right side? Very good. First. Correct. Okay. You find the uh, yeah because this one says okay. Let me write it down. It says probability two times probability of z greater than equal to absolute value of a small z. Right. Let me write it down in a small z. And then we have two times of probability of z greater than equal to, what should I write down here? 0.884 or the 1 point? 1.28, okay. right? And then this is the greater than, right? And then where is the greater than? Greater than in the right side, right? Am I right? And then, I'm going to turn this to a less than side when we are able to get this from table correct now I have two parentheses because I have to calculate this first and then multiply the whole thing by two, right? Okay. And then two times. Now one minus what you get from table. 88.849. Good. Then continue that. Subtract it. 11 point or point 11 51. Uh -huh. Multiply. 
slide by two. When they calculate that, uh, they get 0 0.2293. When I calculated that, and you also calculated the same thing, right? So we get 0 0.23.02. So they used applet to tap, calculate this. And that's why the result is more accurate than the table. Do you, do you understand the difference now? And sometimes, I mean, in the past, what's happening that uh, in, on Achieve, a student will get the answer that I would get. You know, everyone else will get from the table. And then Achieve was calculating the result based on computer computer based result and it would be different from what we get or a student you know get from table so I had to change the precision so a students uh, answer from table would be exact same I mean would be acceptable with actually so here is a difference between what you get from Apple and then what you get with yourself okay so what happens, because this is a two-sided test, we have this area and this area together for p-value, right? So that's why you multiply what you got to two, right? And then now, we have this p-value. So, conclusion. What is this p-value? Is it, is it large or is it a small based on either of alpha that I gave you last time? I mean, last question. Um, it's large on both of them. On both, for both of them, right? So when I'm comparing both alpha for you because you have questions in Achieve that first wants you to compare with alpha equals 0 0.01 and it wants you to then compare with the bigger alpha and then bigger alpha will be 0 0.05. You know, you're assuming something like that. And then you will compare with two of them. Sometimes the result is larger than both of them. But sometimes the result is a statistical significant based on one alpha and the other alpha will be not a statistical significant. Just, just this little difference between 0 0.01 and 0 0.05 cause change sometimes. But in this, both of these two examples, we didn't have a like different result for different alpha. So for both of them, Comparing with either alpha, 0 0.01, or alpha equals 0 0.05, p-value is large. Okay, so what happens if p-value is large? Uh, we cannot reject the null uh, hypothesis. P-value large, we cannot reject the null. Very good. Null is H naught. And then if we cannot reject the null, we reject the alternative HA. Okay, so so our alternative said there is a different level of satisfaction. This <coughs> one said there is no <coughs> different level of satisfaction. Okay. 
So do we have enough evidence to support this? Do we have enough evidence to support this? No. All of you? No. No, right? Very good. So we don't have enough evidence to support the claim claim H A. Therefore the there is no There is no dif different level of satisfaction. Yes, in this case you can say because we are not specifically saying basically if it is greater than or less than, just say there is no level of satisfaction. We have a evidence that there is no level of satisfaction. Okay, so does it make sense? Everything is good? Do you understand this? Do you have any question? No? So if I want one of you to explain the whole process, can you tell me from the beginning what I do and what, okay, tell me what, one of you starts and then if, if you have a pause, another student can continue, if you know. Okay, tell me. So if I give you a story like, like these two, so how do you start? Um, Okay. What's the difference will be or what is not what it should be? Very good. So the first thing is to set up our null and alternative hypothesis, right? Based on the claim they are making. Sometimes our null value, the claim value is zero, but sometimes some other time maybe there is a value for that. So you always should look for the claim value. You should look for uh, information like the sample size, average of mean in sample and also the standard deviation of population right so the next step now we have our uh, claim set up do we have a pattern to use what kind of z statistics we have to put together we have to put the the z statistic together and all the information we have to find the z test statistic right correct so we get the z-test statistic. We have calculated the z-test statistic. What is the next step? Uh, we find what the p-value equation for the p is. Very good. So we find out what p-value equation we are using based on? Um, what is the alternative? What is the, based on the alternative. Very good, right? And also based on the z-test statistic we have to find, right? Good. So now, imagine you calculate the p-value. So what is the next step you should do? Um, compare it to the alpha. Yes. Very good. Compare it, the p-value with alpha to see if it is less than or greater than p, greater than p-value to see if you have a large p-value or a small p-value, right? So, and then if p-value is a small, what do you say? Um, the, the if p value is a small, the top part is a small one. B reject the null and accept the alternative. Good. We reject the null. And cannot. Cannot. Cannot reject the alternative. <laughs> so we reject the null, but we cannot reject the alternative. And that a small p value is a statistically significant means we have enough evidence to support people or scientific claim. 
In both of these questions, we didn't have enough evidence to support their claim. But there are situations that we have a small p-value and that will be a statistically significant result and we can support their claim. But in both of these questions, we couldn't. Oh, great. So now the last, uh, the last thing we are going to learn in this chapter, actually you already learned that. So do you remember uh, in previous chapter when we were talking about confidence interval, we were trying to find the sample size based on margin of error, based on Z star, right? So I'm just, this one, if you remember, we used to say margin of error is equal to Z star sigma over square root of n, right? Mm -hmm. This is just organized uh, formula to get the n. So it's it basically same. You know, you used to put this information and this information and this information, cross multiply to get, isolate the n, and then you would say, okay, our sample size should be this if our margin of error is this, right? So now the formula based on this formula, formula for our sample size is this. So this is the familiar concept to you. you already, we already talked about this in previous chapter, we solved question. And then do you remember if we had, for example, as we, got 19.23 uh, for the sample size, what would I say? What is the sample size? The sample size is 20. 20, we always round it up, right? Do you remember? So it's the same, same uh, concept and same way of uh, solving for sample size. Uh, and uh, here is the example, it says, in example, Okay, one of the examples in the book, it says psychologists recorded the size of the tip of 20 patrons in a restaurant uh, when a message indicated that the next day's weather would be good. Okay, so they, they wrote down on a bill that the next day weather uh, will be good. And then we know that the population of standard, standard deviation is two, we want to estimate the mean percentage uh, tip meal for patron of this restaurant who received this message on their bill within 0 0.5 margin of error. So 0 0.5, uh, if you remember, I said if there is a plus minus, means that's a margin of error. So in this question, the margin of error will be 0 0.5, this one, and then based on 90%, we should figure out what is the Z star, right? You, sh you can do that, right? Mm -hmm. So you should be able to find the Z star based on, based on 90%. And then uh, we have the sigma, and then they are saying uh, how many pattern must be, uh, uh, must be up there for sample. So in this way, based on the margin of error they have, and based on the confidence interval they want to uh, use, the sample size is 43.3, and they are saying because 43 pattern will give a slightly larger margin of error than desire, um, we choose 44 um, with a slightly smaller margin of error. So we had this kind of example before, it's just a review for you, how we find a sample size based on the higher margin of error and other information we have in the question. Okay, do you have any question about this? And then it's also saying always round up the next higher whole number when finding confidence. Okay, so now, we are going to start on this question. We may not be able to finish it. Actually, we have almost 15 minutes. Um, okay, so let's write down 
all the information we have for this question. And then we try to solve it. Okay, so it says as a hospital, the average number of new hospital acquired, acquired infection is 16.5 infection per week. Hospital staff decided to implement new procedure to reduce the number of hospital acquired infection. Four months after the new procedure were implemented, an SRS of nine weeks. So the first information actually, it's easier to understand is the sample size, right? So they have a sample size of nine. Found an average of 15.3 infection per week. So what is this 15.3? What should I write down? Um, the X bar. X bar, very good, 15.3, correct? Suppose hospital acquired infection are normally distributed with a known standard deviation of 2.1. So we have this. At the 5% level of significance, so what is this 5%? Have you? No. It's not. Uh, I level of significance. It, it relates to p-value. Means this is the value, huh? It's, it's like how significant the, the like, p-value is. P-value is, yeah. So this is the value we compare with p-value. So what is this value? A. Alpha, 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 right? So this is the cutoff value alpha is, okay, so how do I write down 5%? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So remember, level of significant is alpha, right? Is there evidence the new procedure reduce the rate of acquired infection? So what is the first step for us? Take the hypothesis using the verification. So we are talking about the mean infection in, pop in whole population, right? We are talking about the mean infection. So the mu. Mu is equal to something versus mu greater than or less than or not equal to something. What is this something that they are compared to? The infections per week. What value do you think is the null value that they are comparing to? 16.5. Okay, do you see that? So they are comparing with 16.5 and what is their claim? Very good. So how can I write down the sign of alternative based on reduce? Less than 16.5. Is that correct, everyone? Is that correct? Do you get that? So if the mu becomes less than 16.5, means the claim is true, right? So I'm going to write down this is the claim that procedure reduces the rate of infection. Correct? Which one? Z. 
Also, we could the z tested statistics. Yes. Okay. So small z is x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma over square root of m. So x bar is 15.3. Mu naught is 16.5. Very good. Now, sigma. Sigma is not, oh. 2.1. Very good. A square root of? No. Nine. Nine. So, what is the z-test statistic? Negative 1.71. Yeah. Was that negative what? 1.71. 71. Correct? Mm -hmm. So now, the next step. Should I write down? Um, P. Um, v is less than or greater than small c. Less than or greater than? I mean, less than or equal to. <laughs> less than or equal to small or big test. Right? Mm -hmm. So. Less than or equal to one, negative 1.71, 1 right? And then this is the left side. This is the less than, so you can find it from table without any problem, right? Less than, left side, from table, A. Zero point? Zero four three six. Zero four three. Mm. Oh, it's a negative. Good. Yeah. Means if I had a table, I had a graph like that, it would be here. Um, like not here actually. Would be somewhere here, negative one point seven one. And then we were looking at less than, right? Correct, everyone? You got that? Okay, we have zero point zero four three six. What's your alpha? 0.05. Mm -hmm. So the small p value? Is alpha of 0 0.05. Correct, everyone? So p value is less than alpha or greater than alpha? Less than. Less than. So p value is less than or equal to alpha, which results in small p value. And then what happens if we have a small p value? Do we need that scale that we cannot use that scale for? We need to go to j to see. No. Cannot. So if we cannot reject the alternative, what should I write down based on this study? We have enough evidence for what? We have enough evidence to say the procedure reduced the link of infection. Very good. That the procedure
Do you understand this? So we couldn't reject their alternative. So they were right. And this procedure can, you know, reduce the rate of infection. Correct? Do you understand this? Clear? Oh, great. Okay, so next time we are going to continue solving more questions. Okay, for this chapter. And then if you have any question, because next time you'll be the last lecture. If you have any question from homework, bring it to the class because your exam will be just next week, right? Right? Yes. Okay. We'll see you on Thursday. Have a good day.